Blackboard. Welcome everybody to the two o'clock advanced class. Thank you all for coming today. Hope you had a fabulous Thanksgiving. Um, and we are going to work today on a song from the Flower Drum Song. I did not see that musical. That was one that I missed, but I watched some of the um, recordings on YouTube and really nice, 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 nice stuff. So the song is You Are Beautiful on page 356. Don't forget, once we're finished with this book, we'll go right back to the beginning and start at the beginning and work our way in. Because if you would have told me six months ago that I'd still be Zooming now, I would have said, you're crazy. So you know, I started in the middle of the book. <laughs> what do we know about You Are Beautiful? Um, Flower Drum Song is the eighth musical by the team of Rodgers and Hammerstein. And it was actually based on a 1957 novel by Chinese-American author C.Y. Lee. It premiered on Broadway in 1958. And then it was adapted into a um, made-for-TV film in 1961. Um, the team hired Gene Kelly, believe it or not, to make his debut as a stage director, not as an actor, but as a stage director. Originally, they really wanted Yul Brynner, um, who was coming off of his The King and I, and they wanted him to do some directing because he was already doing directing, but he was working on another production. So they used Gene Kelly to make his debut, and some people were happy with him and some people were not, but that's neither here nor there. It was beautiful, beautiful musical. Other songs that came from this are I Enjoy Being a Girl, Love Look Away, and Chop Suey, and those are probably some of the ones that you, that you knew even if you hadn't seen this wonderful musical. Okay, so I, I did it on song setup to start, and it came up with Love Ballad at 75 beats per minute. I actually liked it a little bit faster um, because when he's actually singing it to her, it's very slow, very slow and sexy. Um, but I actually thought when you played it a little bit faster, about 82 would be a little bit nicer. But again, use what you think. Uh, the first time I played it, I'm just using the song setup, which comes up to a low tenor sax. I think they were trying to emulate his voice. And there's an organ, a higher organ on the bottom. That was kind of to emulate the two singers. Um, the oriental instruments are very different from some of the instruments that we use, and their tuning is also very different. Uh, I'm sure some of you have done this. Yeah, we've all done that, right? Those five black keys actually, if you play, this, play just the black keys, are actually a pentatonic scale. Pentatonic meaning five, penta. And that's how many of the um, oriental instruments, that's probably not the politically correct word I'm supposed to use, um, worked. And so when you had a stringed instrument, okay, that's how it sounded. Um, I also went into the genius, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today too, and pulled up some oriental instruments. Like what? What is the most prominent Chinese instrument or Japanese or Asian? Asian's probably the word I should use. Um, is a koto. A koto. How many of you have gone through your genius voices and found a koto and didn't have any idea what it was, so decided I'm not using that? But it is a Japanese, <laughs> it's actually Japanese, Half tube z zither. So if you know what a zither is, it's kind of a Japanese version of a zither, and it's the national instrument of Japan, and it's derived from a Chinese instrument, and it's also similar to a Mongolian instrument and a Korean instrument. So they all and the Vietnamese, they all have similar similar instruments. But the koto is actually Japanese, and it looks like that. Very interesting, huh? And all those bridges that those strings are on, like guitar almost, 
Those are movable for different tunings. The ancestor of the koto was actually the Chinese <laughs> guzheng, whatever a guzheng is. <laughs> and it was first introduced to Japan from China in the 7th and 8th century. The first known version had five strings. Uh-huh, five strings. So it actually sounded like this. And if you just play on the black notes with a koto, that's what you're going to get. Now, where else can you find a koto besides just going into your genius? Those of you that have category presets, if you go into the more and go into the around the world, number seven gives you orientals. and a koto on the bottom. So try, whoop, here comes Penny. That would be a good place to start. All right, so what else do we know about the koto? I think it's gonna make this song sound really good. If you wanna know more, go to Wikipedia. There's some beautiful pictures of instruments. Whoop, here comes Mary. And what I did is I actually did this with not only those Japanese instruments, I also went into my background. I just kept it on Love Ballad. And I touched here to edit style. When you touch there to edit style, you get all those lines across the way. And those are all your inside voices for whatever background you're using. And we'll talk a little bit about more um, that after I play the song. You can change all of those sounds. What if you change them all to kotos? <gasps> Actually sounds pretty interesting when you do stuff like that. You gotta mess around with, you also have volumes. You don't have to use them all. This does not affect, it does not affect your bass. Your bass player is gonna remain the same. Your drummer is gonna remain the same. Your, your lower chord sound, which is your lower tabs, will remain the same. But this is everything that's in your Genie and Orc Plus shows up in your window when you're editing the style. And it's not if you change the sound, it's not going to change the pattern. Meaning that if Bill Curry put in here, oh, let's just take some of this apart. Let's turn off, let's turn off the bass. Let's turn off the lower chord. All right. Hear what the piano is doing? Let's turn off the drums. This is a piano in the Genie. I've turned off everything else. Whatever that piano is doing, if you change the sound, if you change the sound, it's gonna do exactly what that piano is doing. It's not gonna do other things. It's just gonna change the sound. The same thing with the guitar. There's a guitar in here. If I change the sound, it's going to do exactly what that guitar is doing. It's not going to do something different. So by scrolling, I can change to other guitars. Now that's a harmonica. He sounds terrible because it's still doing what that guitar was doing. It's not doing something that a guitar would normally do. So you have to be very careful as to which instruments you decide to choose because you need to figure out what is that instrument doing. So how to do that is to isolate it. Turn off your drums, turn off your bass, turn off your lower chord, which is over here in your graphic mixer, and it says lower. That's the, all the volume for your lower chord. If you turn your drums all the way to the bottom, then what you're getting is you're getting everything that's in the Genie and the Orc Plus. But they've taken the Orc Plus and they've put in all the separate instruments that are in there. And by isolating them, what do I mean by that? Well, just turn off the ones you don't want to listen to. And you turn them off by touching that first column of boxes. And then turn it back on when you want to hear what it does. 
Once you've changed your instruments, then you can also change the volumes. The volumes are the last column. And right now it says 100 for all of them. That means it's that full blast volume for everything. Well, you can have a, get an instrument in there that overpowers. And then you can just lower your volume so you can still have it in there doing its thing. It's just going to do something a little softer. All right, so let's go back to song setup. And I'm just going to play song setup the way it shows up. And did I add extra chords? Oh, yes, because I can. <laughs> comes in and sings. Outside under a gazebo, and he's telling this shy um, flower girl how much how beautiful she is, and it's really a touching scene. It's a very very beautiful scene. Yep, but this is the way the song setup originally comes up here, and if you like that, go ahead and use that. But if you're not crazy about it, then you can change the sounds. So here it is. I'm just going to play the first couple of lines with the koto and the instruments that are brought up on top just by going to the more category and going to around the world and choosing number seven and keeping the background, the rest of the background is all the same. So let's see what, how this changes it. That changes the flavor a lot, doesn't it? It makes it a more oriental sounding. I should not use that word. That's, it should say Asian, right? Okay, I will try to use Asian and be more politically correct. All right, let's change some chords. Um, they're not hard chords. There's just more of them. Just more of them. All right. If you wish, you may make that C. A C6. How do you make a six? It is the chord. You must play it from the bottom up. C, E, G, A. And if you look at the melody, the sixth of the, no of the chord actually is in the right hand. So if you choose not to play the chord, you're going to get that sound anyway just from playing a C chord because it's in the melody note. So C6, C, E, G, A. The second measure over the word beautiful, beat one. Go back to a plain old C. Measure three over the A for small, C6. And again, if you notice, 
there's that sixth of the chord is actually in the melody, so you don't actually need it. So you can just stay on C if you want. Second line, first measure, first beat, C, plain old C. Second measure, cross out the G and replace it with D minor, D minor for two counts. Beat three over the G for the word girl, go back to a plain old G. The next measure, you're going to have one chord per note. And that just makes emphasis on those notes. Eyes met mine. Over the E, put an E minor, elephant minor, which is E and G. Over the F, put an F. And over the G, put a G. Pretty easy. Third line, first ending. First beat, over the D, put a D minor, dog minor, D and F, for two counts. Third beat, over the G quarter note for the word boat, plain old G. And the C is perfect right where it is. Second <coughs> ending, over the E for pass, E minor, elephant minor, E and G for two counts. Over the A, beat three for riv, put an A minor. And over the A for er, put a G or a G7 or a G9. A G9 is a four-fingered chord. It is F, G, A, and B. So you're coming from an A minor, so if you just want to play G7, it works. A minor to a G7. Or you can do A minor to a G9. There's really not that much difference in those two chords as because they're coming one beat after the other. The C in line four, if you wish, you can make it a C6-9. Six, 6-9, nine. Six, nine. wow, that's a five-fingered chord. Or you could just play C, or you could just play C6. C6-9 C six, nine is C, D, E, G, A. Five fingers. And it sounds fabulous. That's it for that page. Let's go to the second page. Line one, you're perfect right where it is. Line two. You may play the D, you may play the D7, which is C and D, or you may play a D9. D9 is C, D, E, F sharp. And if you notice in the melody, that there's your F, your F sharp is there. I know that's not the ninth of the chord, but the E is. So you're going to get it in the melody anyway. So if you just want to play D or D7, please feel free to do that. The G7 is fine. The next C, you may make it a C6. C6. C, E, G, A. Next measure, last measure of the second line. Over the C, plain old C. Just a plain old chicken. Third line, over the A, C6, or plain old C if you want. Second measure, over the C for way, plain old C. Cross out the G and replace it with D minor. D minor. D and F for two counts. Beat three over the G for eyes. Go back to your plain old G. We're just repeating what we did on the first page. Then for your next measure, we're going to have one chord per note. Over the E, it's an E minor, E and G. Over the F, plain old F. And over the G, plain old G. Second measure, over the E for clear, 
E minor, elephant minor, for two counts. Over the A for herd, A minor, C and A. And over the B for me, G or G7, F and G. And then your C or C7 is good. The last line, you may play plain old F or you may play F6. Now, F6 is one that I, I usually will cheat and just play plain old F because you have to pull your hand out of position completely. You must have the F on the bottom of the chord. F, A, C, D. And again, the D is already in the melody line, so you're going to hear that anyway. The G can be a G7 or a G nine if you play the g9 it's f g a b four fingers right in a row and then end on plain old c and you're going to be absolutely fine uh, don yes on, on line oh i lost you okay um <laughs> one two three four i think it was on line four over clear what was that chord that's an e minor elephant minor okay i just we lost connection here, so. Oh, okay, that happens. Yeah. Get unstable, and I lose what you're saying. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate All it. All right. Oh, and by the, way, the go ahead. Yeah. Sometimes when we just add what, like for the note of F, we add the chord F. Is mm -hmm. that always acceptable? If you just want to jazz up something. No. Oh. no. <laughs> Only no. when you tell us. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, not always acceptable. And and to prove to prove that you might want to try it and you're gonna say, ew, that doesn't sound right at all. No, a lot of times um, the notes are passing tones, or they might be the ninth of the chord, or they might be the sixth of the chord. So no, finding chords is not always about, oh, if I've got an E chord, I can play an E note. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. It works sometimes, but no, you, you can't use that as a rule. <laughs> no. John, the last line on the second page, uh -huh. you change a, to a, a G7 or a G9. Was Correct. that first measure or was that in the second measure? That's, a, that's in the second measure. The G okay. that's already printed is the G we're working with. Okay. Yep, very good. By the way, when I watched the, um, the film clip of this, from the 1961 film clip, um, the gal that plays um, Mei Li, um, I recognized her and I couldn't figure out where until I continued reading some of the comments. And she was the, uh, the caretaker in the courtship of Eddie's father. I don't know if you guys remember that TV show. <laughs> That's, that was the actress who actually played Mei Li in the film. So in interesting little pieces of trivia. Why do you need to know that? Because now if you go on Jeopardy, you will know the answers. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really the only reason you need to know that. I am now going to play this. Wow, we're going to be done early today, too. With the edit style. And we'll go back and talk about editing style again. And I did change some things in the background. So I went from this, which is your love ballad, to this. Can you hear the difference? Back, original, the original. To this. Hear the difference? Hear the difference? It just changes the whole thing into more of just being played totally on a koto. Now, I didn't change the strings, but that guitar that was doing the bum, 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 that's what the koto is basically doing then because that was one of the sounds I changed. And I left my around the world sounds, my koto and my oriental sounds here, and this is what it sounds like now.
on? Yes. So when you said you changed, did you go in to edit and put the koto on? Most definitely did. Yeah. What did you do? Take it just where the guitar was, or or? Nope. What? Let me show show you what I did, or tell you what I did, because I don't think you can see it all. Um, when you go into your love ballad, which is what song set up, right. it up to, okay, and then you touch the top of the screen, it's going to say Genie Electric Piano, Orc One Guitar, Orc Plus Two Strings, and Orc Plus Three Harmonica. Now, again, if you wanted to listen to what each one of them is doing, then you would want to go through and turn things off and make sure that, oh, yeah, that's going to work for a Koto. So right. what did I do? I went in and changed the genie, which was the piano, to a koto, turned the volume down a little bit. And then Orc Plus One, I went into a different type of a koto, a taisho koto. And because that is a very loud instrument, I turned it down to 92. I left the strings on because strings are going to be doing this kind of thing. And a koto is going to be doing plucking things. Right. So the orchestra three with the harmonica, I did change it to a koto because I wanted, I could have just turned it off and gotten rid of the harmonica. But I did put it on koto and turned it down to about 88 volume, and that worked pretty well. Now, again, you, you're, if you're going to do something like this, you must save it into a preset because right. the minute you change a preset, it's gone. Yeah. So if okay, you're going to do you. something like that, and what's nice about it is that you can go back in and tweak and change and undo and redo until you get exactly the right balance and exactly what you're looking for. And you can use this at Christmas time to change a background into all bells if that's what you want. For example, let's do this. This is always fun. Let's do Randy's favorite background, the Champagne Foxtrot. He loves that background. That one. That's been on every organ from the beginning of time. <laughs> the Lawrence Welk background. Okay. I'm going to touch here to edit style. And it says Genie Piano, Work Plus One, Strings Timpani, Orc plus two accordion, orc plus three organ, orc plus four horn trio. Now remember, when you change sounds, it's not going to do what you want it to do. It's going to do exactly the pattern that that instrument is doing. So how do I isolate those? Well, let's take our bass off. Let's take the lower off, and let's take the drums off. So now the only thing that's going to be playing are the genie and the orc plus sounds. Okay, now let's isolate. I'm going to turn off the bottom four and just leave the genie on. What's it doing? What a piano normally does. Let's do something. Let's change that to bells. All right, now you cannot do this. You cannot do this by numbers. So you have to sit and scroll. And it's a kind of a slow scroll. So you just got to sit and scroll. Not tonight, honey. I'm scrolling. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm coming closer. There's some bells. Celeste bells. That's not too bad. No. Regular bells. Let's go back to the Celeste bells. Can you hear them? Yep. Doing exactly what that piano was doing. Okay, let's turn him off and turn on the second one. Oh, that's one of these things. You know what? Let's turn that one off completely. Let's go to the fourth one. This is an accordion. He's blipping. He's blipping. Perfect for bells. So we're going to touch accordion, and we're going to go to bells, and we're going to let the bells do some blipping. There we go, just regular bells. Ooh, that's kind of pretty, actually. Then if I turn on my Celeste bells, kind of pretty, huh? Yeah, so you can, I'm designing a background 
to play some Christmas music. I'm not just accepting what it's giving me, and I'm not just changing the sounds, I'm changing the actual background. That's actually kind of, kind of cool. All right, let's turn those guys off and see what the organ is doing. Not much. It's kind of blipping a little bit. Okay, we're going to change them to bells too. Why? Because we can. <laughs> you can always turn them off again later. But this is what makes it so much fun, is you can choose a background and say, yeah, yeah, we're going to make this my new Christmas background. And you're, it'll, it'll take on all the sounds that you're, that you're putting in here. Okay, let's put in some handbells there. Let's see. Make them a little louder. All right, and the last one is called Horn Trio. Oh, yeah, we got to change that one. Doop de doo doodly doodly doots. Doodly doodly doots. All right, we're going to go with. Oh, yeah, that's cute. You're going to find some fun sounds. But can you tell that it's doing exactly the same pattern of what the sound is? You're just changing the sound, but whatever that sound was playing is exactly what your new sound is going to be doing. So, whoop, so as long as you understand that, then you can have some fun with it. Oh, hurry up. <laughs> All right, we're going faster now. All right, regular bells, and I'm going to lower the volume a little bit because that's kind of obnoxious. But they're pretty. Now let's turn on all of them. Okay, so now I have some bells going. Now let's add back in the drums. Let's add back in my bass. I can add in the lower if I want. Ah, now I have to have, now I have to have some Christmas sounds. Do not push a preset. If you push a preset, this will all disappear. <sighs> Unless you decide to go in and save it. Okay, if I go in and save this and go memorize E1 with style. Yes, because style is what you just changed. Now I can actually go into different preset. Let's see if I leave it on E1. If I go into the more section and I can go to bells or holiday and I can get some different bell sounds on the top. Bells and harmony. Let's try that. Let's try that with my C1. Oh, no, a chain. No, I'm sorry. It was E1. I just erased everything. <laughs> yeah, see? And if you erase stuff, guess what? It's okay. So what did I have it on? Nope, I had it on bells and harmony. Nope, it didn't like that either. Okay, so then I'd have to steal another sound. I'd have to take from my bells, and I'd have to save that, and then I'd have to combine them. All right, so. Or I can go over here and go to bells. Let's do that. There we go. Got other stuff on yet.
not only did you design a sound, you also designed your background. Oh, so that, I sure did. Yeah, so that can be kind of fun. So editing style, and if you want to do it for the for your You Are So Beautiful and put some kotos in, you're going to get some, some very interesting things. Okay, so we want to do some Christmas music from now on and put this book aside for a while. Is that what we yeah. want to do? Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay, we shall do so. Um, I will try to pick a book that's in, pick a song that's in book 215, and um, I'll, ugh, I don't know how I can post it. You know what? I'm going to pick two songs. I'm going to pick one for next week and one for the following week so I can actually announce it so you guys can have some time to look for it. Okay? But they'll, both, they'll all be in 215? I'm going to try to make them all in 215, yep. yep. Sure, it'll be in one of the Christmas books. It usually <laughs> is. <Yes. laughs> okay, it usually, it usually is. And I'll, I'll try to pick something that I can make super hard just because you guys are my advanced class, and so you guys can handle it. <laughs> okay. um, would you have time to, like, do the, like you did with Dixie? Oh, actually... Yes, I've already got a couple of those done, like I did Oh Holy Night. Um, a couple Ooh, of weeks back, oh, I, did, I did I Heard the Bells. Well, I did one like good. that. Yep. Yeah, I, that, I would enjoy those. Okay, okay, Me good. Too. Okay. Me too. Okay. Do I have time to do a whole nother one? Um, well, that's okay. Two possibly. <laughs> it depends on if, if Robert wants me to do a concert. If He usually gives me two days. You know, he gives people two days' notice, you know. Yeah. Dawn, guess what? You're going to do the concert this week. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of time to practice. No, but if, if, if I don't have to do a concert, then, yeah, I'll have a little bit of time that I can actually work on some of that stuff, which would be kind of fun because it is it helps you learn the buttons of your instrument. It does. Yeah, it really it, does. It teaches you to do mem memorize and precepts. Yes, right. that, mm -hmm, it does that too. Yep, yep. And this is the per. You guys are the perfect class for all that stuff. All that <laughs> how, good how stuff. How about uh, doing one for Silver Bells? I I did. Yeah, Silver Bells is a good one. I I did a little bit of that um, a couple years ago, but I didn't do the complete. Um, yeah, that would be a good one to work on. Yeah. Not going to guarantee I'm going to do it. Let me look through. I might just pull out Oh Holy Night and do that. Yes, yeah, that's such like a that. popular that would, song. Be good. Okay. Good. Now, for those of you, I will do fingering for those of you, but I always hold off the fingering till the end because I know some of you don't need it, don't want it, don't care about it. So there's no reason to make you guys sit through it. So for those of you that uh, don't care about fingering, thank you so much for coming. I love you Welcome. guys all. See you next week. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And the, yep, I'll Wednesday, see you all next right? week or other classes. The rest of you, let's do some fingering. John, How does that sound? Yes. A quick question. Go ahead, uh, Anne. Are you working with the Toys for Tots this year and having a box sheet like things dropped off from Fletcher? We are, uh, not now. I, I don't know. We, I have not heard yet. We're doing our Christmas meeting Wednesday evening for, okay. for the month of December. I do know that... Um, Joe Apicella, I don't know if you remember him. He mm -hmm. also collects toys for um, for the forest. Oh for yeah, the, I remember that he had yeah. the truck. Yeah. Right, 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 right. And he would he would welcome that. He would welcome any donations or you know toys for for the the kids in the forest. So do we drop those off by you? You may, yes, and then I'll just call him and he can come pick them up. But okay. let me find out first if we're doing anything for all children's because that is Fletcher Music Centers. Right. Um, that is that is what we donate to is all children's hospital, and that has to come first because that's the company. So, right. okay. so Just keep yep. It yep. So after the meeting, after the meeting on Wednesday, I'll be able to give you a little bit more information about what's going on in the month of December since COVID has absolutely turned this world upside down for too long <laughs> and we need to stay safe so we'll have to figure out how we're going to do christmas and looks like zoom might be it and you know what i love doing zoom it's kind of fun actually and i get to see all kinds of people <laughs> yeah, it gives you, you a lot more opportunities you had uh, yeah from other communities absolutely 
You had 40 in your class today. I did. Yeah, I did. Oh, maybe have a good day. I'm going to get off. Okay, Pammy. Yes, Pam. Have fun with your new organ tomorrow. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> I'll bet. I don't think I could wait either anymore. All right, let's do fingering. A5. A5, G4, C1, D2, E3. A5, G4, C1, D2, E3, F4, G5, D2, E3, F4, G5. Third line, D2, E3, F4, G5, G5, C1. Second ending, E1, F2, G3, A4, A4. Next line, A4, A4, B5, A4, G3, F2, E1, D2 with a circle, C1. A4, B5, A4, G3, F2. Second page, E1. You might want to put a little arrow on the next F, make it a 3. G4, F3, E2, D1. High C5. E can either be 2 or 1, and then both E's would be the same. Second line, F sharp 3, F sharp 3, F sharp 3, E2, E2, D1, A5, G4, low C1, D2, E3, A5, G4, C1, D2, E3, F4, G5, D2, E3, F4, G5, E1. You might want to put an arrow on that one, too. Otherwise, you're going to want to put a 3 on it, and that's not going to work. E1, F2, G1 with a circle. You have to tuck that one under, or else you're going to run out of fingers. A2, B3, C4, and the last line, D5, C4, B3, A2, G1, F3 with a circle, low B1. E can be 4, and C can be 2, or whichever fingers get there first. Yep. <laughs> Dawn? Yeah. This is Mary. Um, on the top of the line, on uh, the first line on the second page, uh -huh. um, is it possible that there are no chord changes? It is possible that there are no chord changes. Huh. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sleep through it. <laughs> <laughs> nope, sometimes they're absolutely fine just as they are. <laughs> hey, thank you. Sometimes if it ain't broke, we don't fix it. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yep. Any other questions? What's the best way to get the music for next week? Uh, I, don't have the books. I don't have the books. As soon as I know, um, David, I can, uh, I can send you a copy. I just have to make sure that you email me and remind me. Please send me a copy of, of whatever you're doing on Monday. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but that's going to happen for a couple of people. Now, like I said, I'm going to pick two songs so that I can announce the one for the week following as well so that people will have time to look for it. All right? Okie doke. All righty. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Dawn. You. Bye, you guys Dawn. are awesome. You really are awesome. Don't be afraid to push the buttons on your instrument. It's so much fun.
Great job, Dawn. Bye. Thank you for Bye. everything. Bye. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Love you guys. Love you too. Bye-bye.